This is the Content Marketing Podcast, episode number 165, The Seven Golden Rules of Demand Gen Content. Hello and welcome to the Content Marketing Podcast. This is the show where we help you attract and retain business through the power of quality content. I'm your host, Rachel Parker of Resonance Content Marketing, and today is March 10th, 2016. Hello, hello, or as we say in Texas, howdy, and thank you for joining us for today's episode of the Content Marketing Podcast. Just a reminder, this podcast is available on iTunes and Stitcher and SoundCloud. So if you like what you hear, please click on over and subscribe so you can get every single episode delivered directly to your happy little ears. I also want to invite you to download our new ebook. It's called Ninja Secrets of B2B Blogging, and you can get your very own copy at B2B Blogging ebook.com. And remember, that's the numeral two in B2B. Okay, last week, we talked about five ways you can turn your next conference attendance into a content goldmine. If you happen to miss that episode, feel free to check it out on iTunes or Stitcher or SoundCloud or via the RSS feed. Today, we are talking about lead generation. Specifically, we are sharing the seven golden rules of demand generation content. But first, it's time to check in with our news feed for this week's rundown of news you can use. Kind of a quiet week on the news front, which I never mind. You know, I I like a little boredom once in a while. We get an excitement every single time we pick up our heads. Um, We've got an announcement out of Facebook about... Um, about live video. Now, Facebook Live is, of course, Facebook's live video feature. They're they're, um, counter to Periscope and things like that. And it's becoming very popular. In fact, Facebook has... um, has decided to rank live videos higher in the news feed than other types of content. And this is unusual. Facebook is really usually pretty tight-lipped about its algorithm and how it ranks uh, some content over other types. But, you know, this makes sense because live video is all about the live experience, right? If you see it recorded, it's not not live anymore. So it would make sense to want to have those those notices of that live video prominent in the news feed. So if you want to up your Facebook news feed mojo, consider adding a Facebook live video to your bag of tricks. And remember, this is this is now available for all users. Um, but it's only available on um, on Facebook mobile, on iOS and Android. And if you want to um, learn how to use it, there are many blog posts out there that can help you out with getting started with Facebook Live. Okay, our content hit of the week is a post titled, Five Ways to Get SEO Traffic in a Hard Niche. This is by Neil Patel over on the Quick Sprout blog. And... What I love about this post is Neil focuses on brands who have very specific challenges when it comes to search. They either have very, very small audiences or they might be in a market that is, just has tons and tons of SEO competition. Um, or there, there are certain other elements that make their um, SE, their approach to SEO particularly challenging. And he shares some terrific insights, as, as Neil always does, specifically on how you can make SEO work for you, even if you're working in a challenging environment. So um, very, very interesting post, and I will provide the blog, uh, blah, 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 back that up. It's a very interesting post, and I will provide the link in our blog post for this episode. That's it for this week's update. If you stumble across something you think might be of interest to your fellow content marketers, please shoot it on over to us so that we can share. And you can always tweet me at at Resonance C-O-N-T. That's Resonance Content with the E-N-T lopped off. Now it's time for this week's Spotlight segment, The Seven Golden Rules of Demand Generation Content. 
Our theme for this month on the blog and now also on the podcast is demand generation. And this was really inspired by my attendance at the B2B C2C conference last month. It there was a very um it had a very strong element on demand generation and how important it is and how critical it is to have good content fueling those demand generation strategies. And it finally kind of um made me realize, well, I can't I can't ignore this topic anymore. I've got to you know, got to bring it to my audience, and we've got to start talking about it because demand generation—it really um, it adds that strategic element to content and. I'm not going to go into exactly what demand generation is and what it has to do with content marketing, but if you would like uh, an intro to this topic, I invite you to check out my blog post from last week. It's titled, What is Demand Generation and Why Should Content Marketers Care? And you can find that over at Resonance. Uh, res- excuse me, resonancecontent.com slash ping, P-I-N-G, and just scroll down to that topic. And that will give you a good overview of demand generation, what it is, and how content marketing aligns with it. So today I want to talk about the seven golden rules of demand generation. As with all things, there's doing it, and then there's doing it well. And you know, I, I feel like as as marketers, sometimes we're, we we get into the mindset of, oh, well, this guru told me to do this, so I'm going to do this and check it off my list and be done with it. Um, and, and then they wonder why they're not seeing results. But so it's not a, it's just a matter of doing, you know, doing content marketing, doing demand generation. It's a matter of committing to doing it well so that you you can achieve your goals as opposed to simply having something checked off your list. And all content marketers who follow these seven golden rules are doing quite well when it comes to supporting their demand generation efforts. Golden rule number one is be strategic. And, you know, we can't just be, well, we can, but we're not going to get any results if we are just creating content and throwing it out there. You know, here's what I feel about, like writing about today. Here's what I feel like putting into a white paper. Or here's what I think people would be interested in and just kind of shuffling it out there, you know, shoveling it out to the web. We've got to be strategic and we've got to map out the visitor's journey saying, okay, what do they need when they first start looking into solutions for this problem? What do they need at the next phase? What do they they need at the next phase? And then slot our content in at each step. Step one, might be uh, might be a blog post, and then if they want to go deeper, there might be a white paper that they can download. If they want to go deeper, there might be a webinar that they can attend. But be very strategic about how you map out that visitor journey and how you place your content as a resource at each stage to, stage to help them through that decision making process. Golden rule number two is create solid personas for all levels of that buyer journey. And, you know, sometimes when I talk to people about who they want reading their content, they immediately say, oh, well, we we want the CEO. We want the CEO to be reading this. Maybe, maybe not. You know, CEOs, yes, they, they, the buck does stop there, but, um, it's a, it's a mistake to think that all decisions reside with the CEO. Even if your decision maker is going to be a, on, on the director level, um, that's that's going to be your your ultimate goal for this demand generation. But you almost also want to focus on those lower levels. So, f- for example, if a company is looking to um, partner with the new staffing firm, well, you know the director might not be the person who is out there doing that initial research. It would probably be assigned to a lower level person, maybe a manager or even a specialist. And we need to be conscious of who those people are at each level of that process. It's not just about targeting the top dog. It's about meeting the needs of who that person is and what stage they are in that process. Golden rule number three is to establish a rhythm. Remember, we are taking our audience on an educational journey as we lead them through that lead generation funnel. And just as you wouldn't try to teach calculus to a second grader, you don't want to um, attack someone at that top of the funnel level with very granular and very complex content. You want to start off with more general, you know, more more solutions oriented, and then funnel down, funnel down, and, and more focus and more um, complexity as you go down that funnel. Excuse me, I'm swallowing a lot. I've got a little frog in my throat today. I hope it won't. I'm hoping it won't amount to anything. I had. I'm done with being sick. 
Pardon me. Okay, I'm back. Um, we need to to reach these folks at each level of that decision making process, and keep in mind their level of expertise, their level of interest, and what they really need from us. Golden rule number four. Oh man, this is huge. One offer at a time, please. <laughs> okay. At each step of this demand generation process, the goal is to get them to the next step not to offer everything under the sun. So sometimes I'll read a blog post and I'll see afterward, you know, in the, in the call to action section, they'll say, Oh, you want to know more about this topic? You can download our ebook or you can download our white paper or you can attend our webinar or you can check out our podcast or you can check out our, our training course. And it's so overwhelming that people don't do anything right. When we're overwhelmed with too many choices, we tend to decide nothing. And that's been backed up by, by psychological studies. So at each stage, de- determine what that next step is and keep it very simple. You know, if you enjoy this white paper, um, contact us about scheduling a webinar or something like that. Make it be, be very deliberate and very conscious about making one offer at a time and making sure it's the right offer to take them to the next level. Again, we're, all, we're always, as we go down that funnel, we're offering more detail and more complexity. Golden rule number five, match the message to the market and the mission. So remember, we talked about personas a couple of minutes ago. We need to match our messaging to what they need at that stage in the buying process. We don't want to overload them with very complex, very granular information when they're still in that kind of general research mode. We will scare them away. So um, always remember to be conscious of that that market or that the audience behind each phase of that process and the mission. What do you want the next step? What is the what is the logical next step for them to take and how can you encourage them to take that step? Golden rule number six. Oh wow, this is another big one. Sell the offer and not the product. Remember, in demand gen, our goal is to get the audience to the next step, not to sign them up as customers. Okay, <laughs> you don't want to give something, especially at high levels. You know, you don't want to say, "Hey, did you enjoy our blog post? Become a customer. Sign up today." You will scare them away. So take take them to what's next and focus on what's next. Don't worry about the sale. Okay, if you are guiding them through this demand gen process, they will. You know, you will get to the point where you can ask them for a sale, but not not at every level and not all the time. So at every stage, make sure that you are selling them on the next step and not necessarily selling the product or service. And then finally, golden rule number seven is to always, always align with your sales team. Now, it, as we all know, there's a love-hate relationship between marketing and sales. You know, we should all get along because it's just two sides of the same process. But I know there's a lot of a lot of bickering going on, and each side thinks the other is, is are, are total prima donnas. But we need to get together. Okay, let's all get along. Let's all get along. Get behind the same thing. Um, good demand generation. What it does is it creates a seamless flow from marketing to sales because as you bring them down that funnel, eventually you're going to get to the point saying, you know, you've come this far, would you like, uh, would you like a complimentary consultation? Or would you like a demo? Or would you like to talk with a member of our business development team to find out how these solutions might work for your organization? And it, it needs to be seamless. You need to make sure that everyone is singing from the same songbook. Uh, make sure sales knows all about your process. Make sure they, um, I know it's going to be tough, make sure they read those white papers, make sure they read those ebooks, make sure they sit in on those webinars. Because what you don't want to do is to start with that, to, to bring that customer to the, the point where they're talking to a salesperson and have them just re- rehash a bunch of old information or just kind of start talking out of left field about things that they, they've never even heard of as, as they've been engaging with your marketing. So always, always align with your sales team to ensure a successful demand generation process. Okay, those are our seven golden rules for a demand gen content. If you have others that you would like to share, please tweet me at Resonance C-O-N-T. That's Resonance Content with the E-N-T lopped off. Now it's time for our content marketing tip of the week. <music> In any effective demand generation strategy, your MVP, your most valuable player, is the landing page. 
the landing page is where you make the offer, where you offer the ebook, where you offer the, um, the, the white paper or the webinar. And there is both an art and a science to good landing pages. Any good landing page is brief and to the point. It's, if you will, it's the sizzle behind the steak, <laughs> to, to coin an advertising phrase. And I have got to say, I have seen landing pages for white papers that are so freaking long, I feel like I've already read the white paper you know, by the time I get to the, the field where I enter my email address. So here's my formula that has served me very well for landing pages. You start with a very brief introductory paragraph, maybe two sentences. This is a good place to bring in statistics that, that might catch people's eye to draw them in and to kind of set up this resource that you're offering them. And then three bullet points citing three key takeaways. I would stick with three, be brutal, be vicious, narrow it down, slash as much as you have to slash, get it down to three, and then um, finish it up with a simple call to action. You know, download your copy today or something like that. Don't don't try to get too cute or, you know, add this awesomeness to your bag of tricks today or something like that. Just a very simple, very, um, very clear what the step is needs to be. And they enter the email address and then they download. And I know it can be tough when you're working on landing pages, especially if you have a lot of, of cooks in the kitchen, um, especially if you're working with subject matter experts. They want to overload the page with information. Oh, we need to tell them this, we need to tell them this. But keep it simple and your audience will reward you. <music> Okay, campers, that is it for me today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Content Marketing Podcast. I've enjoyed our time together, as always. If you like what you've heard today, please feel free to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or via our RSS feed. And if you really like what you've heard, please leave us a quick review on iTunes. I would so appreciate it. Also, don't forget to grab your free copy of our new ebook, Ninja Secrets of B2B Blogging, at b2bbloggingebook.com. Of course, that's the, num the numeral two in B2B. As always, I like to leave you with a quote, and today's comes from world champion driver Mario Andretti. He once said, quote, If you have everything under control, you're not moving fast enough, unquote. So keep that in mind the next time you feel totally flustered and crazy and out of control. Lord knows I do on a regular basis. Again, this is Rachel Parker with Resonance Content Marketing with Barking Dogs in the Background. Thank you again for listening, and we will see you again next week. Take care.